In a previous video we saw how to calculate the run capacitor and the start capacitor to connect a three-phase motor to a single-phase line. Today we are going to take the next step, learning how to correctly disconnect the start capacitor, both manually and automatically. Let's take as an example a three-phase motor with six terminals or six wires. Inside we find three windings, and each one has two terminals, which adds up to a total of six leads in the terminal box. Depending on the standard, the terminals or motor winding leads may be designated with letters or with numbers, but in essence they are all equivalent. The most widely used is the IEC International Standard. With this same motor we can make two configurations, star or delta, and then connect the run and start capacitors in order to power it with a single phase line. In star connection, the terminals U2, V2, and W2 are joined together with metal plates, forming a common point. The supply is connected at U1, V1, and W1. Since in this case we only have two phases, the capacitors must be connected between one of the output points and one of the supply lines, as shown. This configuration is usually used for high voltage. An important clarification. The star connection is not the most common nor the most recommended way to use a three-phase motor on single phase. But since in the previous video many people asked how to do it, here we are also going to explain it, so that it is clear in which cases it can be applied. In delta connection, the end of each winding is joined with the beginning of the next. U1 with W2, V1 with U2, and W1 with V2. The supply is applied at the three corners, and at one of these the capacitors must be connected to the single phase line. This connection is used for low voltage. Now then, how do we choose between star or delta? The answer is on the motor nameplate. For example, this motor indicates 220 volts for delta connection and 380 volts for star connection. Now let's see how the capacitors come in. When the supply is single phase, either between two lines or between line and neutral, only two of the three motor terminals receive power directly, and the third is connected through a capacitor. For example, the phase is connected to terminal U1, the neutral to terminal V1, and at the third vertex, W1, we connect the run or permanent capacitor, which remains always in service and is responsible for creating the necessary phase shift so that the motor can start and keep running. However, in many cases the starting torque provided only by the run capacitor is not enough. That is why a start capacitor is also used. It is connected in parallel with the run capacitor, but through a switch, a push button, or a timer, which will be explained later. In this way, the start capacitor only works for a few seconds at the moment of starting, and then it is disconnected automatically or manually. Pay attention to this detail, the capacitor can be connected at any of the three motor terminals and then joined to the line or to the neutral. The only thing that changes is the rotation direction of the motor. On this channel we already have a video where we explain in detail this configuration, showing step by step how to reverse the motor direction with capacitors. The calculation of the capacitors can be done in a very practical way. For the run capacitor, an approximate value of 70 microfarads per kilowatt of motor power is used. And for the start capacitor, simply use double the run capacitor. This calculation was already explained in detail in the previous video, so here I only mention it as a quick review. The main topic of this video is the manual and automatic disconnection of the start capacitor in a three-phase motor powered with single phase. 
I also explained in detail how the capacitors should be connected directly from the motor terminal box. The link will be in the description in case you want to watch it complete. Now let's go with the diagram for the manual connection and disconnection of the start capacitor. In this case, in addition to the run and start capacitors, we are going to use two elements, a circuit breaker, which will be the main switch and protection, and most importantly, a normally open push button. This type of push button works in the following way. When pressed it allows current to pass, and when released, the current stops. Step-by-step -step connection. From the output of the circuit breaker we take the phase and neutral of the single phase supply to two of the motor terminals. For the run capacitor, we take a wire from the third motor terminal to one side of the capacitor. From the other side of the capacitor we connect to the neutral or to the phase, depending on the required rotation direction. In this way, the run capacitor is connected and ready. Now for the start capacitor. This one should only enter service for a few seconds at the beginning to provide more torque to the motor. It is connected in parallel with the run capacitor but in series with the push button. That is, from the third motor terminal we connect to one side of the start capacitor. From the other side of the capacitor we connect to one terminal of the normally open push button. And from the other terminal of the push button we connect to the same junction where the neutral and the run capacitor are. How do we make it work? Very simple. With one hand we press the push button and with the other we turn on the circuit breaker. We keep the push button pressed for 3 to 5 seconds until we hear that the motor has already reached its speed. Then we release the push button and the motor continues running only with the run capacitor. Important clarification. For this method to work correctly, the motor must start unloaded, that is, without a coupled load. That is why it is very common to see this system in woodworking saws, grinders, polishers, and some centrifugal pumps, where the motor starts free and then takes on the load. If we try to start directly with a heavy load connected, most likely the motor will only hum and not manage to start, because it will not have enough starting torque. For greater convenience, the capacitors, the breaker, and the push button can be placed inside a junction box or any other type of control box, and fixed near the motor. In this way, when turning it on, we have the controls at hand and it is not necessary to manipulate the wires or the motor terminal box directly. Let's now move on to the automatic disconnection with a timer. Unlike the manual method we just saw, here we no longer depend on a push button, but we use a timer that automatically disconnects the start capacitor after a few seconds. In the market there are different types of timers, but for our case we are going to focus on on delay timers. On the left we see an electronic timer with a base, widely used in industry, precise and easy to install with an 8-pin socket. This is the one we are going to use in this video to disconnect the start capacitor. In the center is the modular electronic timer for DIN rail, more compact and precise, although a little more expensive. And on the right, a pneumatic timer coupled to a contactor, more economical but less precise, used in simple applications. On screen we see two ways to represent the start capacitor connection. In both cases the capacitor is connected through a normally closed contact. The function is the same, when starting the motor the contact is closed and the capacitor enters service, after a few seconds the contact opens and the start capacitor is disconnected automatically. For this project we are going to use this timer model, H3CRA8 on delay. This type of timer needs a special base to be mounted on a DIN rail, which makes installation in electrical panels easier. 
At the bottom we see the electrical diagram according to the manufacturer's datasheet, where its eight pins and the function of each one are clearly indicated. It is important to mention that if you decide to use another timer model or brand, you must always check its technical data and connection diagram, since the pin and contact arrangement may vary. Now let's see how to make the complete connection. On the left we have the wiring diagram, where it is clearly shown how the start capacitor goes through the H3CR-A8 timer. On the right we see the representation with the real elements, the circuit breaker, the motor, the capacitors, and the timer base. This timer has eight connection terminals, and for our circuit they must be wired as follows. Terminals 2 and 7 are the timer supply, here we connect phase and neutral that come from the circuit breaker. Terminal 8 is the common contact, from which we take the connection to the start capacitor. Terminal 5 is the normally closed contact, which completes the circuit to neutral or to the other line, depending on the required rotation direction. Finally we place the timer on its base to leave it ready. Before turning on the motor, it is important to adjust the disconnection time on the timer. This must be between 3 and 5 seconds, depending on the motor power. In this way, when turning on the motor by switching the circuit breaker, the NC contact of the timer is closed and the start capacitor enters service. Then, after the configured time, the timer opens the contact and disconnects the start capacitor, leaving only the run capacitor in operation to maintain motor rotation. Now, an important clarification, if you want to use another type of timer, you must check two main characteristics. That it has a normally closed contact, since we need it to disconnect the start capacitor, and that the adjustment time range includes between 1 and 10 seconds, which is the ideal connection time for most motors. That time can vary depending on the motor power. For small motors up to 2 horsepower, normally 2 to 3 seconds is enough. In motors of 3 to 5 horsepower, between 3 and 5 seconds is recommended. And in motors of greater power, it may take 5 to 7 seconds, always adjusting according to the motor response. With this we would already have the complete circuit, both for manual disconnection and for automatic disconnection of the start capacitor in a three-phase motor powered with single-phase line. If you want to access more detailed information, high-quality diagrams and downloadable files, I invite you to join the channel membership. In that way you will support this work and also get exclusive content. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.